We are here with Kamal Hassan, who is the CEO of the uh, Innovation 360 Institute in Dubai. And his primary goal is to try and spread innovation throughout the Middle East and come up with local solutions to local challenges. Thank you very much for joining us, Kamal. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, first impressions? Excellent. Wonderful. What kind, of, what kind of things have you been looking at and seeing around? What sessions have you been looking at? Well, definitely uh, my interest is in innovation and understanding how innovation can contribute to the growth of entrepreneurship. So looking for ideas, finding entrepreneurs who are uh, very innovative in their way of doing business. So go back to that a bit about looking at, looking at innovation. Yeah. I mean, your job is to try and harvest innovation, try and foster innovation. What ways does your institute do that? Well, we started by creating awareness through training, um, trying to create um, an understanding of what innovation is. It's not always coming up with products and services, but also business models innovation. We believe that um, this, this part of the region needs more and more of innovation, not less, no more, I call it the falafel shop syndrome. So we, we need more of creativity and new innovative products and services to become globally competitive. So. Now you've had a history in Silicon Valley, that was yes. basically where you had your entrepreneurial career. Yeah. What kind of experiences in the Middle East can we create that would be kind of similar to that energy that was created in the 1980s in America? It's an ecosystem. It can't be done by one person or one group or one even one industry. It has to be a, a, a combination of government policies, it has to be uh, involvement of VCs and funding, and also the entrepreneurs have to be very aware that the interest is in um, innovation is, is at high level at this moment. So they can't just come up and approach investors with just the next falafel shop, as I said. It's, it's important to come up with um, a game-changing idea. And that's what we um, have experienced and seen in the Silicon Valley is that when you come up with a game-changing idea, there will be uh, investors, there will be people that will be interested in what you're doing. And that would accelerate the innovation process and the uh, investment process and the now, innovation. So. And what your actual institute is, is, is involved in, you're basically saying that innovation isn't waking up one morning with a brilliant idea. It's not having that spark in a shower or it's not you know, walking down the street and suddenly thinking of something. You believe that innovation is something that can be crafted, shaped and taught. Is that correct? Absolutely. And one of the first steps of really identifying innovation ideas is finding um, or understanding the local challenges. So if today I understand what are the local challenges in Dubai, for example, or waste management, water treatment, um, sand, um, uh, uh, local needs for energy. growth, energy, and so on, then I could come up with ideas. So it's not, some, it's not an epiphany. And many, many people have written that innovation is not an epiphany. It's a myth that, you know, it comes in the shower. What is really happens in most part of the world is that they've identified a challenge and they came up with ideas to solve that challenge. Our role as an innovation institute is to help entrepreneurs and corporations taking this idea to cash. We call it idea to cash, meaning how you develop an idea, a concept, a theme, into a real product, an innovative product, and how you take that product and wrap it up with a business model that will go to market and be sustainable for a few years to come before the competition can uh, catch up with you. I'm very interested in something we call disruptive innovation. I want to see the next Skype coming out of here. I want to see the next uh, Facebook or Twitter coming out of here even in energy and I want to see some nanotechnology development is happening here because we do have the infrastructure and we do have the talent we just need to match them with the skills. So basically what you're saying is that innovation doesn't start in an empty room that it's about and identifying problems and the more specific the better for actually developing innovative solutions. Absolutely. Transparency is the first thing governments has to do. If they could tell me what are the problems they're facing I can come up with solutions and ideas. It doesn't happen in empty rooms. So it's a collaborative model that I need to know and innovators need to know what's happening in the local market to design these uh, solutions. So how do you work then in terms of identifying problems, let's call them, or challenges? Are these identified at government level? Are these, are these at large corporate level? How does your institute work in order to find the problems that innovators can then work on? Well, we work with um, several type of, different type of organization. At government levels, 
they state to us or they tell us some of the global challenges they're facing. What I meant by global, nor strategic challenges they're facing. The type of energy consumptions. I have a, a government agency that came to us and say, you know, we produce 4.7 kilos per day of garbage. That's a big challenge because if you look at what, what Sweden produces is half a kilo. Okay, so innovators will come up with solutions. So if we are transparent and put out that challenge out there through some networks, through open innovation, crowdsourcing, then we'll find innovators that are willing to solve that problem. We'll come up with ideas, come up with technologies, we'll come up with a business model to solve that type of problem. And we're not just talking about technological or scientific no, no, solutions. No, no, even business models. Business models that would, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, a business model is the most challenging, but the most rewarding at one point, because you could come up with this product, but if you don't wrap it up with an innovative business model, all what you're doing is competing on price. So, it, it, you know, competition, especially global competition, multinational competition will catch up with you very quickly. And you actually teach innovation. Your institute actually has yes. programs that teach innovation. Can you basically walk us through a process in which uh, an innovative solution would come out from either a workshop or a training session? Yes. So we, we, we focus on teaching innovation through a systematic approach. We call it the innovation management programs. So we start with creating an innovation culture. Because if you don't have, as a corporation, as a government agency, if you don't have an innovation culture, whatever ideas are going to come out, you're going to resist them. You're not going to accept them because innovation is challenging status quo. So if you install that innovation culture in the organization, then the next phase is creating ideas. And we are not satisfied with just thousands of ideas. We want the companies to produce ideas in the thousands and hundreds of thousands, hopefully in the millions. Not internally, but with suppliers and, 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 and customers and the entire ecosystem. Then we prioritize this idea through other workshops to select the most important idea that will make a big impact, financial impact, cultural impact, and impact on the leadership. Then we put it through a design process, which basically taking that idea and making a product or a business model or a service from it and take it to market. We facilitate all of this through workshops. So your, is your organization or you personally also involved in that monetizing that, that venture as well at the end of it? Do you get involved in packaging up a venture around a particular challenge and taking that to market? Or is that something that you kind of step back from? Well, at, at the moment we haven't done it that far because we're still new here in this part of the world. But when we started back in the States, in the United States, we actually have done that type of work. We um, partnered um, uh, inventors with uh, uh, um, investors and, and actually corporation brought in some other investors in, internally to take the idea into uh, the market as a separate company or a separate product. So we've done this in the past, but we haven't yet reached to this level here in the, in the UAE or in the Middle East. Now you're We're hoping with, through this event, we'll convince people to do that. Okay, you're from, obviously you're from the Middle East originally, you're yes. from uh, Gaza, from, from, from Palestine. Say, yeah. you, but you had your, your, the bulk of your career was in, was in America, was in Silicon Valley, and you've now decided to, to launch ventures in the Middle East. What is it about the Middle East that you feel as though is absolutely right for the kind of services that, that you offer? Well, I'm driven by challenge. So put me in, in, in um, Shanghai and say there is a big challenge, I'll go. So I'm very driven by the new challenge, the next challenge. However, because of my origins, because of what I, um, uh, you know, my capabilities, I thought of matching my capabilities with, with what I can do to the region and help promote innovation. I did a study, so I'm not just coming here just for the passion for the region, but also I did a study where I found the innovation and, and, the, uh, and, and the number of patents and the number of innovative solution that got globalized coming out of the Middle East they didn't exist. There are very, very few of them. So I thought this is an opportunity, even though it's a big challenge. So sometimes some of the, my team members think I'm just beating my head against the wall, but it is a challenge that I love to, to work. How can you interact with the community here? You're here for a couple of days, you're here for the whole yes. of the event. What kind of things are you looking for? What kind of people are you hoping to meet that's going to meet your, your desire for a growth in innovation in the Middle East? Well, twofold. One, I would love to meet um, investors that are interested in investing in entrepreneurs and my idea to them is that just don't invest in just the next shawarma sh shop or the next falafel shop try to look for innovative solution because that's 
what will make it sustainable for us in the region. And then also meeting entrepreneurs and saying, you might have the great idea, but you need to wrap it up with an innovative business model because that's what will get the investor's attention. Instead of just putting a business plan, wrap it up with a really innovative business model. So both parties, I'm trying to match the two together. For me, I'm not benefiting as a, an institute other than creating awareness. But uh, hopefully over time, this awareness will lead to business for us. And just very quickly, have you seen anything that leads you to, to be optimistic about uh, fulfilling your challenge? Yes, um, very few sessions on innovation. Uh, that's okay, uh, compared to the total number of sessions. So I would have loved to see more and more um, sessions and workshops and things on innovation. Um, I've attended um, a few conferences right before this one, and there was some resistance to innovation. People didn't necessarily believe that the market needs innovation at the moment, needs to solve needs. My argument is that needs and innovation are almost the same because people innovate because of needs and the, the mother of invention is, is, is uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So I think this is the thing I want to solve uh, is that the, the perception that innovation is difficult is not. It's based on needs that we have currently here. So. And, and it's a two-handed approach. It's not, exactly. just, it's not just innovation in terms of the idea of the products or services. Exactly. It's innovation in how you deliver that product exactly. or service. To Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, good luck. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us on stage. Thank, Thank you very you much indeed. indeed.